Hi everybody, this is Spring with Sups and Sets and Such, and today I'm going to be making homemade peanut butter cookies. So I thought I would video that and share it with you. First off, I'm going to give you the recipe, and uh, then I'm going to tell you the first ingredients in which you need to add. And this is the first time I've used the KitchenAid for making these cookies, so I'm hoping that it turns out alright. Usually I just stir it in by hand. Okay. What you're going to need for this recipe is one fourth cup of Crisco shortening, and I do use the Crisco brand. Uh, one fourth cup of um, butter uh, or margarine, um, and then in your peanut butter, you use a half to one cup, whichever you choose. I'm going to be using three fourths of a cup but you can go as low as a half. Um, and a half a cup of granulated sugar, a half a cup of brown sugar, one egg, one and one fourth cup of all-purpose flour. I use um, white lily. And three fourths teaspoon of soda, baking soda. One and a half teaspoon of baking powder. One and a half teaspoon of salt. Now first off, you're going to mix your shortening peanut butter, sugar, and your butter, and your egg thoroughly. So, first off, we will put our butter in, and I have that, a fourth of a cup. Then our shortening, Let's see if I can get it out of this little measuring cup. And I will put the recipe in the um, description box below the video. So you don't have to write it down now if you want to make these. Okay. Peanut butter. You can use crunchy if you like crunchy. I'm just using Peter Pan. You can use, I use whatever I have on hand. It doesn't have to be a name brand. I've used store brand for these cookies and they work just, just fine. Come out just fine. a little bit on there. See if I can get that out there. Okay, I think I got the most of it. Okay, then our sugar, granulated sugar. Brown sugar, I do pack my cup. So whenever that comes out, if you see, it's holding its shape. Then you want to put your egg, one egg. Okay, then I'm going to cut this on. I'll bring you back once I have this mixed up really good. Okay, I've got that mixed really good. And if you're using a stand mixer or a KitchenAid as I'm using, um, I like to take a spatula and go around the sides and the bottom because usually it doesn't hit very good um, so that way you get it incorporated really good I love my KitchenAid and so far it's working good for this I've got actually got one for food in my home and then I have one in the soap shop for 
making bath products. Okay, now we're going to add our flour. And uh, that was one and one fourth cup. So here's the one cup. And the one fourth cup. Okay, we've got that. Now we need to add our uh, soda, baking soda, and that's a half a teaspoon. Well, no, that's three fourths of a teaspoon of the baking soda. So I need to put three one fourth teaspoons because I don't have a three fourths teaspoon. Okay, there's one. Three. Okay, got that. Let me close this up. I don't want to knock my big bag off and lose it off. Okay, now we're going to want to add a half a teaspoon of baking powder. So, find my half a teaspoon here. Here it is. And I've just got the store brand baking powder. And it seems to work just fine. So we want a half a teaspoon of that. Okay. There we go. About like so. And now to that, we're also going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just using regular old kitchen salt this time. Okay, now I'm going to turn this on and low at first because I don't want a um, big old, whoops, there it comes. Okay, now I'm going to have to use my spatula. And that off the sides. that up like so. And I just want to get that flare where it can incorporate and go underneath the bottom. I want to do the bottom for sure. Whoops. You want that to mix really good. Your soda and all of that to mix in there. Make sure I got all of my sides. Okay, I think I got that for the most part. Now, get it back mixing. And so far, it's working pretty good for this. I think I like it much easier than mixing it by hand, that's for sure. Okay, that looks incorporated just fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put this into another bowl and I'm going to chill it. Now I'm going to let this chill in the refrigerator for probably around 30 minutes. Uh, you could go 15 to 30, 12 to 30, something, somewhere around there, whichever you want to do. But that's what I'm going to do, and I'll bring you back. Okay, while we're waiting on our dough um, to chill, I thought I'd show you what I've been up to earlier today. And I made some of my uh, cocoa chunk cookies. If you can see that. I also did macadamia nut and white chocolate. Okay, it has chilled for about 30 minutes. I had it covered with plastic wrap. Now you're going to have clean hands, so wash them thoroughly. And then you're going to get some dough, 
some of your cookie batter or cookie dough and then you're going to roll it into balls and according to how big you make your balls is how big your cookies are going to be so I think that's about right and you're just going to keep a rolling till you get them all rolled okay now I'm gonna get these rolled into balls and then I'll bring you back okay I've got little helpers helping me <laughs> roll it in a ball dolly get it perfect perfectly round let me see your ball okay now I'll let your brother over here so he can do a ball <laughs> now roll it good no over this way so they can see what you're doing there. You just what? And they have clean hands because I stood over them and watched them wash them. Didn't I, guys? Yep, yes. that's we got to do because if you get drums in it, it's not. That can um, hurt you. Not good. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I forgot to mention that you want to have your oven preheated to 375. 375 degrees and you want to have um, your rack uh, you don't want to have it on the bottom I've got mine in the middle of the oven and I have these ready with the help of the children and the pan looks rough but it does the job really good and it's not rusty it's just discolored but um, you can use the nonstick if that's what you like okay you're going to lay them out like so okay you're going to take a fork and um, there's possibility if they stick which they're not yet but sometimes they'll stick especially if you don't leave them in the fridge long enough to chill um, but you may have to put some flour on your fork but these seem to be doing just fine so I'm gonna get these all on here and once I get them baked now when you're baking them when I'm baking them what I look for is right around the edge of the cookie just barely a little bit brown not much because you'll burn them up and I'll bring you back when I get them baked okay well here they are and um, see the bottom they got brown but they're not burnt they're not hard good and moist and soft and if you uh, make your balls about the size I did you should come out with about 26 cookies now I also made a little heart here if you can see that and um, I hope you'll try this recipe um, they turn out really good and I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a blessed day.